You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. This episode of the Sketchnote Army Podcast is brought to you by Paperlike, a screen protector for the iPad that makes drawing with the Apple Pencil feel like paper. Paperlike's NanoDot technology offers the paper-like friction you want with the clearer screen visibility you need. This new surface even improves drawing precision and reduces arm fatigue. If you're frustrated with the slippery, shiny glass of your iPad screen, try Paperlike. The Paperlike feel on my iPad Pro screen was a game changer. I won't use my iPad Pro without one. It's the closest you'll get to paper on a digital screen. Buy yours today at paperlike.com slash sketchnotearmy. And now on with the show. In this episode, I talk with Berlin-based sketchnoter, author, illustrator, Nadine Rosa, and how she got into visualization, how she wrote her books, and the excitement she has around online teaching, and some of the opportunities and challenges that it presents. You're going to enjoy this one. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I've got a really special guest. I've got Nadine Rosa here on the show. Nadine, how are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. I mean, you're the godfather of sketchnoting. <laughs> I'm well, really it's, excited. <laughs> it's so wonderful to have you on. I love your work. I think you're doing really wonderful work. And so it was exciting for me to bring you on. And as I understand, this is your first podcast in English and maybe even yes. your first podcast that you've been on. Mm-hmm. That is exciting. Yeah. That is very exciting. Yes. <laughs> I feel very I honored that, you've, well. <laughs> that this is the venue in, on, in which that you're doing that. So thank you for being on the show. Yes, thanks for having me. Well, I want to hear more about your your uh, origin story. Like, where, how did you end up in this space? Because I look at your work and it's just beautiful. You just have a real nice touch with everything that you do. And I wonder, is there some history? Like, how did you gain that style? And I suspect that part of it might be because of where you've come from or how you've ended up in this space. Talk, talk a little bit about how you ended up doing what you're doing now. I always say I was one of those kids who was very happy and, uh, you know, quiet and calm when um, you have a pencil and just Mm -hmm. paper and just a space to draw. And I actually was one of those kids. My father keeps telling me that, that um, I was really happy when they gave me pens and said, yeah, okay, you do this and we can do this. And uh, yeah. And then in school, of course, I, um, my, my, my favorite subject was um, art, were art classes. And when it came to the point that I needed to decide uh, what I want to do for a living, I um, um, started um, to learn graphic design. Uh, first uh, in Germany, we have this um, system where you can, um, go into a company and go to school, like mm. two days school, three mm-hmm. days at the company. And then um, it's not like I'm studying, it's like an apprenticeship. Right. And I did that uh, because the, uh, the internet was like rising and the dot com thingy was going on. And so I decided to start uh, learning screen design, but I always tried to like add a little illustrations and mm. like not buying those very expensive licenses for illustrations mm-hmm. and um, photos and everyone had them too. And uh, yeah, I always try to, you know, add a little illustration. And then at some point I was like, okay, I, I want to go studying. And then I started studying communication design and had focus on typography and illustration. I always thought that if you want to do illustration, you have to go like into the editorial direction or into mm-hmm. the children's book direction, which I both like, but, I figured out pretty quickly it's a lot of work and it's not paid very well. Mm, <laughs> so yeah. this is nothing you can do like for, or you have to be very famous to do that. And illustration was also something that always needs to be like perfect. You're, it's not like a quick sketch and you start working on it and add a little more detail here and one more there. And, ah, and it's like never finished. Mm-hmm. And when I got into sketch noting, I was like, that is what I want to do. It doesn't need to be perfect, but mm-hmm. it still can look pretty nice. And uh, I started to um, sketch note live uh, events. And uh, in the beginning, I was very like, oh, Jesus, listening, drawing, listening, drawing. It's really difficult. Mm-hmm. But, you know, over time, it got much, much better. And then I'm, I wrote and uh, drew my first book. And from that on, my visibility changed. So um, the client requests were like, can you draw this? Can you graphic record our event and since then I'm mainly doing illustration and sketch noting and mm. um, visual thinking workshops and all that so that is like my way in a nutshell 
Well, and writing some books too. I think you have quite a few mm -hmm. books as well, which is excellent. Yeah, it's uh, five. I think it's five now. Yeah. Wow. That's great. I think uh, talk a little bit about your most recent one. I think it's about um, building an icon library and how to build an mm -hmm. icon library. Yeah. Yeah, that is the most recent one. I, um, I wrote the first one, like a general one on sketch mm -hmm. notes uh, in German, because yep. the only book uh, about sketch notes uh, was yours, of course, which right. is available in German, but um, there was no other German book at the mm -hmm. time. And mm -hmm. my publisher asked me um, to write one and I was like, yeah, okay, why not? I had no idea how much work it really is, which yeah. I think was good because <laughs> if I would have known that, I would not have started. Yes. Um, and yeah, that was where it like all began with like the books and stuff. And uh, whenever one book was out, the publisher came back and was like, oh yeah, it was a great success. Can we do another one? And can mm. we do another one? And um, so I, I, I wrote one for um, sketch notes in school and um, mm -hmm. I made a little like exercise blog with a lot of exercises and mm -hmm. like um, a quick introduction into sketch noting. And then I was like, I, I really don't know what more there is to say and then they were like yeah what do you think about symbols and I, when I started um, giving workshops I was like why uh, handing out those step-by-step -step guides because mm -hmm. I think people need to understand the system with the um, easy shapes and the visual alphabet and need to apply it themselves right and if you explain it to them step by step how how would they learn but it turns out a lot of people who are really beginners and come back to drawing, they really need that. Yeah. They need to have the quick success to draw something step by step. And then they have like a final symbol. And so, yeah, that was um, how the idea of that uh, book came up. And I made like a, um, yeah, like an overview on uh, creating a visual library and had, it has all the general symbols like um, business symbols, animals, mm -hmm. uh, people. It has a big, part of uh, drawing easy people a holiday food and all that so and mm. yeah and it's a big uh, success it's a huge bestseller and I'm really surprised uh, I'm really surprised about that because um, I was hoping people like it I always hope whenever I make a book people right. like it because yeah. it's so much work and then mm -hmm. you're like please someone buy this book and yeah it's, a, it's a, I, I get the most amazing feedback and I'm really happy about that well yeah. books don't seem to get easier you think okay I've done this before once or something and the mm -hmm. second one is just as hard and uh, yeah. maybe a I mean, little the bit process, easier. Yeah. yeah, the process gets easier because you know how mm -hmm. um, how you have to do it and when you have to deliver stuff to the printer mm -hmm. and all that. But um, the making process is always like this huge amount of work in front of you that's like not getting any smaller. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've yeah. told people when you do a book, you have to just do your best for the day and think and accept that it's enough because if you mm -hmm. really considered everything that had to be done, you would just get overwhelmed too quickly. So you have to just take little bites yes. every day and move forward. And yeah. that seemed to or work Or make another well. book with whatever's missing in the yeah, other one. There you so go. There make you go. another book. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really good. I think, I suspect the book that you wrote has probably helped open the door for other things, I would think, and has mm -hmm. led to your ability to do sketchnoting and illustrations and, and, and then also led to teaching. What part of it do you think you enjoy the most? I'm sure you enjoy all parts of it, just like I do, but there's some things mm -hmm. that you probably like, get excited about. What What do you think is the thing that you get most excited about in the work that you're doing right now? I think it's always the creative stuff when I can start drawing. Mm. I um, Over time, with the experience you gain over, over the years, I don't have the fear of not having any ideas anymore, mm -hmm. which was much bigger when I was younger. Um, for For some reason something always comes to my mind. So the idea is always there, but I'm, I'm a doer. I'm like, I want to bring this idea to paper or to iPad, whatever. Uh, and then it's always like when I can start drawing, that is what I enjoy most. Mm. When, I, when I have a pen and I can draw, then I'm the happiest. Just like life. when you were a little girl, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> I mean, the quality has gotten better. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> maybe the, maybe yeah. the topics have changed a little bit too, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... You're also getting into teaching. I know we talked a little bit uh, earlier about uh, Ben Fellis, our friend, who um, is encouraging you to do online teaching. So tell us a little bit about where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is something that sort of came to me because I'm not like a trainer or coach mm -hmm. or teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, when I started um, with sketchnoting and, you know, 
you get visibility, you post your stuff online and people see you. I got a lot of emails like, do you do workshops? I want to learn that. And I was like, oh yeah, well, I haven't thought about that. And uh, a workshop seems like a lot of work. I will let you know <laughs> once I do one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then someone asked for a workshop in six months. It was like a um, design organization and they have, have this summer program and they wanted to give a workshop. I was like, okay, six months, I can do that. So I said, mm -hmm. yes. And then I had to prepare the workshop, which still was a lot of work. But um, that was the first time I noticed, okay, I can do that. Um, I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, I know, you know, the details. I needed more preparation in the beginning because I wasn't used to like teaching people. But now it's like, uh, yeah, hello, everyone. I teach you how to sketch notes. And I'm really happy that um, I got more self-confidence in front of groups because in, in the beginning, I couldn't sleep the night before that. Mm. I was like, did you think of that? Did you, um, were they like it? They paid money for it. It needs to be mm -hmm. perfect. And now I'm at the point where I'm very self-confident and um, it doesn't need to be perfect. And I got so much positive feedback over the years that I'm like, yeah, I think it's something I can do and I really enjoy. But I'm always, uh, also very uh, exhausted after, yeah. after a workshop. It's, it's very um, challenging um, mentally and physically for some reason mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. after workshop i'm like okay now i need a break for a couple of yeah. months <laughs> yeah definitely it uh, requires energy lots of energy even yes. if you're excited yeah. about it it does yeah. drain you I, I feel the same way and now you're doing online training so what's different about that from being in person i know i think i, I have some ideas but uh, i'd love to hear your perspective mm -hmm. yeah the first thing that's different is you're not limited to a local city mm. or space. Mm -hmm. um, ben and I are doing the Visthink Vis um, um, meetups mm -hmm. for a right. couple of years. And we were always like, we need to find a space. We need to organize it. We need to make people come there and all that. And when, when uh, Corona came in March, we just decided to do it online. And everyone was like, yeah, I can finally attend the Berlin meetup. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I mean, you don't have the borders anymore. It doesn't yeah. matter. We had guests from Brazil in the meetup, yeah. uh, which used to happen in Berlin. So, um, yeah, that was a nice try. And was, it was very good to like get a feeling for um, software and how it is to um, have all the people in uh, little boxes on the screen. Um, and the feedback was really great. And it worked surprisingly well, even though... I mean, we were not in the same room. And mm -hmm. um, last week we uh, tried to um, make like a paid little online class mm -hmm. on it, Ben and I. And um, even that was actually pretty nice. But um, what I really don't like is the tech part about it. Mm. We had huge issues with Zoom. The quality oh. was really bad and okay. we couldn't figure out why. We think it was because Zoom. Zoom was too busy at the time. Mm, okay. But then I'm like, okay, people pay for it. And the quality is bad. That is something I could deal with if they would be in the room. But now right. I'm like, ah, the tech part. Yeah, so you see, I have mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. I, I really like the no border and everyone can attend thing. And you can teach a, a large group at one time. But also the tech stuff and um, that you don't get the sense of emotions right. that you get when you're in the room like what's between the lines and yeah. if people mute themselves or and, and um don't use the camera you don't see that so yeah it's mixed feelings it's yeah. good on the one hand but it's not perfect <laughs> yeah. on the tech and um emotional side mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's definitely similar things that i've observed as well and I imagine there's going to be solutions. Technically, technically, there's probably mm -hmm. something that's Zoom is sort of maybe a victim of its own success since it's so yes. popular, right? So, yeah. but uh, same things. Yeah, the disconnection from people was a big one. Mm -hmm. The funny thing that I did when I started doing, I'm doing more teaching online is I just assumed, I just imagined in my head all the people as if they were in the room with me, oddly enough, mm -hmm. and that seemed to help me with my visualization of who was there, even though, because it's so flat, you know, you don't really hear yeah. anything. You don't really see anything because mm -hmm. unlike a traditional meeting, I don't have a grid of people's faces so I can even react to that. It's just me going. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if something's going wrong, I have to rely on whoever's doing the, you know, the mm -hmm. managing to let me know, Hey Mike, people can't see that. Can you move the paper up or, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. It's just a weird, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, us adapting to the to the medium that's probably yes. taking time, and over time we'll we'll yeah. solve it. But that's I agree. 
that's good to hear. I, that's exciting. I, you know, I've been on a few events who, which I would probably not attend one in Copenhagen, one in mm-hmm. Copenhagen and Scott Viz. And mm-hmm. so that's really exciting that it opens things up. So I guess like, like everything, there's always trade-offs and you have to pick what's the good takeaway from, from yeah. it in, in, in your trade-offs. Yeah. But I think it's going to be the future actually. Yeah. I think, I think we so all too. Have to- yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy about not to have to travel that much anymore with mm-hmm. two little kids. It, it's always been a big challenge. Yeah. Um, and I think it's not coming back. I think the um, people will travel a lot. You have to be in one space will not come back soon. Mm-hmm. So we all need to find a way to deal with the, you know, online thing somehow. Yeah. I kind of wonder yeah. too if um, when even when the point at which people come back in person. So two things. One, I think that will be a very special Mm -hmm. event like you uh it would be a pretty special expectation to be able to do that so it would like it would increase in its uh value for the people in Mm -hmm. in person even if they're going to be careful but then i suspect there might be pressure to um do a hybrid model right so maybe Mm -hmm. you pay one price to be in person and you pay a different price to to be online that could be how things go and the funny thing is i have the feeling people are not willing to pay as much for online Mm -hmm. um coachings and graphic recordings uh than they would be for you being there in person yeah and i'm still it's a big discussion in our um, graphic recording group here in berlin because it's actually the same work and sometimes it's even more exhausting to do it online Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you don't have all the um human interaction you have live so yeah, I, I, I would really be interested on in how the international um, graphic recorders are thinking about that. It's a feeling I have. People are like, it's yeah. online and, it, it, you know, it can't be that expensive. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really depends on which part you value, right? It's it's the yeah. processing. It's whether it's in person or not in person, it's still the same work. But yeah. there's definitely that that's going to be a, probably a challenge and there will be some shifting that has, has to happen mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. Yeah. What in looking into the future? What are you most excited about for the future for your, for the work that you're doing? That's a good question. I'm actually really looking forward about the not traveling mm. <laughs> uh, part um, that much because yeah, with little kids, it's always you know you have to organize so many things, and mm-hmm. if you can do it online. It's much more convenient for me. Um, so that is actually something. Um, but work wise. I think I always wanted to try to go into, um, maybe you've seen that online, uh, you, you probably know Striberia, right, from mm-hmm. London. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing amazing work and they had those little animations in their sketch notes. And I thought, you know, with Procreate having hmm. the possibility to make tiny animations, maybe that is something how you could like uh, add something very special to mm-hmm. sketch notes. Mm-hmm. So maybe having tiny animations in sketches, that is something I really want to do mm. at some point. And I had a friend, she um, she had some experience with like augmented reality graphic calling. Oh. So like, um, it's very basic for now, but um, imagine, you know, being in a room, being three dimensional, that is something I could, uh, I, I find really interesting and um, I hope I can try it at some point. Mm. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, I think the big the the whole online topping uh, topic is something I really need to um, think about more because it's in the future things will happen more online. So I have mm-hmm. to find a way to make my uh, work accessible online. But I know that people wrote to me that like now uh, they would really attend an online workshop with Corona and um, they don't have to come to Berlin anymore. So maybe that is something. Yeah, I should mm. think about more. I didn't have, you know, the my my mind free for that because of the mm-hmm. Corona thing right, and schools right. closed and all that. And um, yeah, that is something. Whenever I have a couple of minutes, I should think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's exciting. Like you said, there's trade offs, of course, but maybe there's ways to solve those trade offs, and it could be quite good, right? Because, like you said, you could determine when you do the workshops and uh, mm-hmm. fit it around your kids' schedules and have the time to plan for it and, and experiment yeah. and try some things. So that's, that's really great. As I said, I, I'm really a big fan of your work. I think your, your style, but also your dedication likewise, to just likewise. being there. You just <laughs> consistently putting things out and doing work and helping people. And 
you know, people are seeing that, uh, like me and many other people. So I just wanted to let you know, thank you for all that work that you've been giving to us in the community and sharing with us. We really appreciate it. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank welcome. you for inventing sketch notes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, I just gave it a good name, I guess, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on. Marketing is everything, right? Yes, so. exactly. Yeah, it does. It definitely works. Yeah. So I want to shift a little bit now to uh, your favorite tools. I know that you have some favorite tools. We've we've touched on them in the past, but I would love to hear uh, first analog and then digital tools that you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mm, like until three years ago, I would always have said it's always paper mm -hmm. and pen and like fine liner. Um, I was very an analog. I really like paper, drawing on paper and all that. Um, but then we had a meetup at the Apple store in Berlin, a Vistic meetup. And then um, there we could try the iPads and Procreate. Mm. And I was always like, no, we, we are looking at so many screens all day. I don't need an iPad. It's not <laughs> how I want to work. And then I tried it and I was like, damn it. I need one of those. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, I got myself an iPad um, and I actually was used to um, Wacom Syntex. Yeah. Um, I used that in my work, but it was always really difficult to like, you know, attach to the computer yeah. and uh, like- um, Octopus of cables, yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I really hated that. It was never something for like, I need to draw something very quick. And with the iPad, it was like, wow. So you can draw like on paper, mm -hmm. you can, the, the pencil is amazing. You can do like um, uh, pencil shades shading, and all yeah. that. Yeah, shading. and. Um, it's even better than the Cintiq pen I had and the Cintiq mm. um, tablet. And then I started using it all the time. I, I think you need a few days or weeks to like get used to the yeah. flat surface and all that. And I mean, it's not paper and to like get used to the um, uh, brushes you need and all mm -hmm. that. But once you're there, it's like the most amazing thing. I would say it's the best hardware thing I bought in my whole uh, work life Wow! because I got so much faster with it. I, I'm like doing a lot of tiny illustration jobs that were so such a big amount of work mm -hmm. because you know you have to do sketching and then you scan it and then you, you have um, to fix add it. color <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> and all that and then you get the changes and you have to do the same thing again and it's been like hours to work on that and now i'm like sketching it quickly on the ipad and then drawing it and sending it to the client and my first book and i drew that on paper and then yeah. um a guy came to pick it up and send it to the publisher it was taking so much time just to get the drawings from me to the publisher mm -hmm. and now i'm like drawing it on the ipad uh, sending it to dropbox and then they take it and it's done mm. i mean that's wonderful and i really love that i um save so much time like not only in yeah. sketch notes, but also in illustration work. And I'm doing more illustration work actually since I have the okay. iPad because I can do it so quickly. And uh, yeah, and with um, sketch notes, it was actually the point where I started getting more into the field of graphic recording mm. because I'm not um, I'm not a big size person yeah. like um, the like Ben and all the graphic right. recorders with like um, the huge walls and all that. I mean, it looks really nice, but I like to have small paper mm -hmm. small uh, place to draw on and with the ipad it's you have the small ipad and you can project, project it. it yeah yeah somewhere and um if you are used to sketch noting and if you're good at sketch noting i think it's just one step to graphic recording mm -hmm. and if you're used to sketch note digitally uh, on procreate on the ipad then it's just an even smaller step to graphic recording. Mm. And that's um, that's the point where I started to um, do graphic recording jobs as well, which I really like too, because um, I always pick the um, the conferences that I like from mm -hmm. um, from content-wise, what they're doing. And where I know when I go there, I learn a lot of new stuff. Yeah. It's not my field, but I learn a lot, of, uh, a lot about the environment, a lot about diversity i had mm -hmm. one about diversity lately uh, before corona and uh yeah and that's why i love my ipad so <laughs> the answer is uh, i'm i'm a very digital person now mm. i'm a mm. i'm a an, yeah ipad person <laughs> ipad and procreate that's my setup and what size ipad do you like the bigger one or the 11 inch what's the yeah. size that you yeah. prefer the big one no i have the bigger one okay but i use it a lot on my um on my desk too so okay. um I think if I would use it, um, you know, 
if I would go to a lot of workshops and need to carry it a lot, I would like the smaller one more, yeah. but I like the bigger screen. It's, gotcha. it's like a, like a regular um, sheet of paper. So yeah. yeah, the bigger one. And it's similar, I think, depending on the size Cintiq you have, maybe closer to the Cintiq for space, yeah, which right. probably is mm -hmm. important having transferred from that, from that device. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you must still love paper and pen, though. So are mm -hmm. there, do you have favorite pens that you like to use? Are there favorite notebooks or paper or cards or anything that you can share with us that you still mm -hmm. use? I still do a lot of analog work. And um, mm -hmm. whenever I'm um, like want to sketch ideas very quickly. I think paper is the way to go. And also I do a lot of um, visual diaries when I go on vacation. So that's something oh, yeah. I always do yeah. on paper too. Uh, maybe maybe because the iPad feels more like work and the paper feels mm -hmm. more like, you know, just drawing playing. and see. Yeah, yeah, playing, right. And see where it leads you to. So um, I always have um, like an, I don't know what's the size in America. It's A5 in Germany. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like this. Uh, with me and I really like the ring book thingies for okay. a while mm -hmm. but then I had two of those books got smashed in my pocket like the Ooh. yeah it it stuck and it was like I couldn't open it again oh, because no. of the ring thingy and um, now I'm using those um, Leuchtturm um, mm -hmm. uh, they have a nice color so if, if you yes. finish one book you can uh, have like a rainbow have in a your, rainbow yeah. yeah I really like that <laughs> um, that's the ones I'm using now because um, okay. they are flexible and um, yeah and I always have that with me you know for all the ideas that come all the time and need to go somewhere. And for sketch noting, I like um, fine liners. Um, the, my favorite ones are those oh, yeah. micron, micron, micron yeah. uh, micron. pigma, um, because I like the ink is very dark and um, mm. it's waterproof. Uh, so those ones, and then some brush pens, but I don't have any favorites here. I use the okay. uh, Neuland fine fine ones, the small mm -hmm. ones, With and brush, yeah. Uh, yeah um, Tombow does does the job, so, and there's mm -hmm. some from Stetta, which are like uh, like those ones. I don't really care. I just need the perfect color for that, so I have no okay. favorite uh, here. And since I'm not doing much flip chart stuff, um, I have just a few um, outliner um, um, mm -hmm. Neuland. Uh, yeah, the bigger, pens, bigger yeah, ones. Yeah, with the black ones. ink. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's actually it. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I need. Simple. You're yeah. a simple girl. Mm, sometimes. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> but I mean, you know, simple pleasures of using good tools and uh, finding ways to make use of them, it seems like. Yeah, I think it's it's actually an achievement when you found something that works for you. Like if yeah. you know that's the perfect pants for that and that's the per It's like actually, if you know, that's my favorite food. I don't think that's boring. That's actually an achievement because you know <laughs> that you like it and you don't yeah. need to keep looking for something else. And so if you mm. if you have something that works, I, I'm like, okay, maybe it's because I'm older now and uh, I just, you know, I'm not that flexible anymore. But I'm like, okay, they work. So why change? <laughs> yeah. Well, you find the things you like and you, you roll with that. And, you know, mm -hmm. having those stabilized is a really good feeling. Yeah. Especially in, you know, times that we're in now where everything seems to be unstable. Having those stable yeah. things is now even in some ways more valuable than it was yeah. before. So I agree. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to shift to three questions. So we, we uh, talked a little bit about this. I do this on every show mm -hmm. where the way, I, the way I position it is imagine there's someone who's listening, who's mm -hmm. into visualiza visualization, sketch noting, and they they're excited about it. They've reached a certain level and they feel like they want to keep on mm -hmm. moving forward and growing. What would be three things that you would share, three tips that you would share with them? Yeah, I think my first one would be lower your expectations. Mm. Because even if you are, that, ex that is actually something that um, a lot of even professional illustrators coming into the field of sketchnoting or graphic uh, recording have that they, um, they're used to doing things so perfect. I mean, we all are. Mm -hmm. That's what we learn in school, like mm -hmm. do something very good and uh, practice it and be the best in something. And then mm -hmm. if you start with um, sketchnoting, 
you actually need to lower those expectations because mm-hmm. if you want to have it super perfect, it's very frustrating, especially in the beginning. When I had to uh, move out of my studio in, in March, I found my sketchbook with my very, very first uh, sketch notes at the conference mm. where I met Eva Lotta Lam, who introduced, mm. introduced me to the uh, concept of sketch noting and your book and mm-hmm. all that. And they are so bad. They're so bad. <laughs> it's just a little, you know, doodling and adding little text to it and whatever but Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter they worked for me i mean it's not about being perfect and of course we all i have a whole blog post on that online um about good sketch notes how good Mm -hmm. sketch notes need to look uh need to look like and i keep telling my um, workshop participants that sketch notes don't need to be perfect or even pretty to work for you they can be really ugly and of course we all share our pretty ones and the beautiful ones i also mm-hmm. only share the good work uh, uh on instagram so you have the feeling they need to look like that but they don't they can mm-hmm. be very messy they can be very dirty or ugly or whatever if they work for you that's fine so lower mm-hmm. your expectations that's still number one <laughs> even though i talked a lot about it um the second one would be i guess practice a lot because for some reason, people think that being good at drawing is a natural talent, mm-hmm. but being good at sports or music is practicing. Mm-hmm. And actually with drawing, it is the same. So if you want to become better at something, you need to draw a lot. You need to draw every day to get there. When people go to my workshops and they say, I want to draw like you, I'm like, yeah, uh, it's I do that every day. It's part of my job. I draw for hours every day. So And for years if, and years, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, if I would, you know, do sports for like three hours every day, I would be much better at sports, which I don't and I'm not. But um, it's practicing. It's the same as training for a marathon or something. So practicing is something you really need to do. And I think with sketch notes, it's super easy to uh, like do it every day. You can, Mm -hmm. you know, whenever you are on a phone call, you could doodle some tiny icons or um, if you like um, make a grocery shopping list. There's so many um, opportunities to draw. It's very easy to like use it in your everyday life. So that would be number two. I would say look for inspiration Mm. because it's really hard to start from zero, especially if you are not used to drawing or if you haven't drawn for a long time, then go to the internet. I mean, the sketchnote community is huge. Go to Pinterest, Mm -hmm. check for the hashtag sketchnotes, sketchnoting on Instagram. There are so many um, Mm -hmm. pieces to get inspired. In the beginning, I think it's totally okay to just copy stuff, like to... um, copy something you really like because that's how you learn how you draw it Mm -hmm. Um, but once you get more into the professional field I recommend to develop your own style and not to copy anymore because that is actually a very thin line from copying Mm -hmm. something to like changing or take the inspiration and create something new but in the beginning I think it's okay to copy to learn from it and then when you get more professional Try to find your own style because with all the mm-hmm. new sketch notes and graphic recorders coming in, um, we all need to find our USP and you need to have something to be very unique. And that comes from creating your own style. Mm-hmm. I guess that's um, that would be the story of your latest book, right? You're giving people mm-hmm. the permission and the structure in which to copy mm-hmm. the way you draw icons. But eventually, once they learn that and they feel comfortable and they want to push farther, let's say they want to be more professional hmm. then then they would take what you did and sort of well, i'm going to do a little twist on that i'm going to do it mm-hmm. this way and i'm going to change this little bit and the line weights and the, i mean the personality of the people does eventually come out i think unless you really hold to copying and i don't think that's good like you said it's not a good growth pattern right because you're just limiting yourself and i just love seeing so many different ways of doing sketch noting and it, it having a personality of the person doing it. That's the mm-hmm. most exciting for me to see that variation. Yeah. It just makes it so much fun. So Yeah. And the way the lines are uh, created, sometimes they are very yeah. thin, sometimes very bold, sometimes very um clean, sometimes, you know, more like rounded and all that. And round. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's a lot of personality I agree. And you have to find your very own style if you wanna be successful in this field as like a business field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Right. You have to somehow stand out. I yeah. Think, yeah. For sure. Well, those are three really great tips. Thank you for sharing those. And the last part of the show is how do we find you? What's the best place to go to follow your work, to see your workshops, to see your books and such like that? What would be the place you would recommend, the places you would recommend? I think the best place would be Instagram. Uh, I'm okay. Naderosia, N-A-D-R-O-S-I-A, uh, on Instagram, because that is actually the, the tool I'm, that works fastest for me, because you have an idea or you draw something, and then you just post it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good place to start. Um, and then it might be difficult for your listeners because, um, most of my work is in German, like the books are mm -hmm. in German and my blog is in German. So, um, if you want to read my blog, it's sketchnote, um, uh, hyphen, is it hyphen? Sketchnote mm -hmm. hyphen love.com. But you can use Google Translate. I think it does a very good yes. job on translating blog posts. I'm really surprised, um, how good it works these days. And you can read my, um, blog posts in English, but it's mm -hmm. of course all in German. So are my books, actually. They are all in mm -hmm. German, even though the last one has the least text in it. So if you don't mm -hmm. speak, uh, German, I think it's not that bad in that case. I, I've sent it to um, Vietnam and to Israel and to Brazil mm. and people are like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's about the drawings. It's so visual, right? Yeah. I think all of them in some, to some degree or another, you can not necessarily speak German and still get the gist of what you're trying to say, especially the last one. Yeah. But I'm still, I mean, maybe someone's listening. If someone is interested in um, publish, publishing them in English, yeah. then um, you're welcome to... Or other to languages too, right? Like in Vietnamese yeah. or something yeah. else. There Portuguese. were some uh, questions uh, from, I think, Russia mm. to translate it. But the thing is, translating my books to other languages is very difficult because I have so many handwritten texts in it. And yeah. I would have to redo all of that. And then it's it, it's going to be very expensive, I think. And then they're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, we don't know. So, yeah, they are in German. So that's maybe, yeah, if you have German-speaking listeners, um, go buy my books. And if I you think there's quite a few, actually. And, yeah. you know, there is a tool that exists. Google Translate has a tool on a phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. which um, uses the camera. I don't know how they do this, but they send images to a mm -hmm. server or something and they translate it live. So mm -hmm. now it might not be your handwritten text. It probably changes it to Arial or some typeface, mm -hmm. but it can, it does its best to translate. I'm kind of shocked when I've, when I've used yeah. it. It's actually pretty good. Um, I use it for menus I, once I'm in a foreign oh, country. Really? It's really oh, awesome. Okay. It's good so idea. good. Yeah. So you could have her books and then just have your phone there when you want to read through it. And then there's so much visual that I think that probably supports that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been really great to have you on the show, Nadine. And uh, thank you for sharing a little bit of your history and the way you look at things and your tools and all these great things for us to look at and think about. I'm sure people are going to be uh, going off to look at your work if they haven't seen it already. Um, you just have a wonderful style that I really, I really enjoy. Thank you. And I hope you continue to have really good success and that, um, that your online courses go well and you just have so much work that you don't know what to do with it, Nadine. Yeah, <laughs> I do actually. I do. So that's, that's good. a good thing. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Well, thank you for uh, so well representing sketchnoting and being such a great voice in the community. Yes. And for those who are listening, thanks for listening to the show. Until the next episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast, this is Mike Grody. Talk to you soon. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Grody, and brought to you by Road Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.